Hello everyone, welcome to Open Source Cook. This is a video about how to create a screencast using a specific software called as VocoScreen. Now in the current situation, many of us who are teaching, we need to prepare our lectures in a recorded mode. So there are different options that you can use. But after using it for some time, I have found that this particular tool is quite simple to use. And I hope uh, people with no experience or even a bit of experience will be able to use this particular tool in a much more easier manner. This tool will work directly on your machine. So you don't need any kind of internet connection or anything while recording your videos. Of course, if you want to demonstrate something from the internet, then the connectivity is required. Apart from that, while working or creating the video, you really don't need any kind of connectivity. Your videos will be directly recorded and stored on your machine. So let us have a look at this. Once this video is completed, in the next video, I will demonstrate to you another software which is again fairly easy which will help you to edit your videos because when we'll be making our videos there will be external sounds and other things probably we will be taking pauses or like this sound in the background some vehicle has passed so we want to edit these kind of sounds or the gaps or glitches that might have happened so we'll be looking at another software. Again, it will be open source under the GNU GPL license or similar. So you will not have to worry about the cost and other things that are involved. So let us get started. So the software is VocoScreen NG. There is an earlier version of this software also, which is simply VocoScreen. So you can either use either of them both have a similar interface. Let's get started into looking at what is there in the interface. Once you have installed the software, I'll be providing you the installation links later on in the video or they'll be provided in the description of this video. So what is the first interface? The first interface is the screen. That means what all you want to record. You want to record the full screen. That means everything on your screen, whatever is getting displayed, will get recorded. Now, this will provide you more options if you have another monitor connected. Fine. So, if you have another monitor connected, multiple monitors are there, it will give you an option of selecting which one you want to record. Next is a window. Suppose you are demonstrating everything in a window only and you don't want anything else to be recorded part of the screen or something then you should select this when we will start the recording option it will automatically ask you to click on the window and then it will start recording everything on that window any action outside that window will not be recorded another one that is very interesting is an area so if you have a real big screen or let us say you just want to concentrate on a certain part of the area of your screen and you don't want to record the remaining things, then this is going to be very suitable. You, you'll get this box. You can drag it anywhere on the screen like this from this plus arrow, which is in the center. You can arbitrarily resize it according to your requirement or you can select the size which will be suitable for you fine so let us say i have selected 800 by 600 so anything that comes inside this area will get recorded this is useful if you have a real big uh, screen and you want your presentations or other applications just to be shown inside this area but keep in mind whatever is inside this area will get recorded okay so i'll keep it on full screen right now i'll omit this magnification part it works as a lens so 
just demonstrate see something like this is going to happen so you'll have to intermittently change in between uh, these things so we'll just avoid this for the time there is a countdown timer what it means is when you will click on the start button to start your recording at that time it will give you a countdown so that you are ready uh, by that time so it can be set to seconds so you can set it to one two three or four five seconds next let us see the microphone depending upon your operating system you will have to select one of the microphones so probably you will have to try one of these before you start recording if you have a caller mic or something which you can connect to your system then that will also show up so you will have to check usually built in will be the one which is connected to your laptop so you have to select one of these before you actually start recording you can do some trial recordings by selecting one of these and see which one works for you next is the movie setup or the setup at which you want to record so here we will not do any kind of changes we will leave it to default the only thing is you should make sure the frame rate is set to 25 this is a simplest and the suitable settings if you have much of the ideas you can set it to something else the only thing i would suggest is if you are planning to upload this on youtube or you want to distribute it the mp4 is the most suitable format for the time being and as soon as you select mp4 it will automatically set the codex and other things to this thing okay so another option that is there on this screen is do not record the mouse cursor now when you are seeing my recording you can see this mouse cursor is visible fine now dependent upon your requirement whether in your screen recording or demonstration you really want to display the mouse pointer or not accordingly you can decide so if you select this the mouse cursor will not get recorded fine so these are the simple things <coughs> the only thing in this i would suggest is set it to mp4 and that would be the most suitable option for you next setting over here is the video path that means by default where it will store the videos now uh, make sure to set it to some suitable location that is where by default your video will get stored otherwise later on you will keep on searching where did my video go so this is important limit free disk space in megabytes you can limit the size of your video how much it is going to be there so according to your uh, understanding decide on this how much if you want to be on a safer side set it to say around 500 mb or 1 gb i doubt if anyone has a space constraint these days with so much of disk space available but let us set it to 500 so the idea is while you are recording your videos will not exceed 500 mb at a time Uh, the settings which we have done for the video recording are good enough they are fair you uh, making a video of 15 to 20 minutes will be around 100 mb or so we will have to test that but they don't exceed or become too big at a time again it will also depend on your screen resolution and what all you are recording so show in show in system tray basically this means icon will be displayed in the system tray right now you can see this icon over here in the system tray so that is why it is there because when you will be uh, recording at that time if you can see there is a pause button while recording you may want to pause in between rather than stopping your recording intermittently so if you want to pause in between you can pause also you can see it's showing me a shortcut so shift control f12 is a shortcut to pause the recording now i cannot say whether the shortcut 
is going to be common for all the different operating systems but it should display according to whatever your operating system is you can use that shortcut or usually when you will click that system tray icon this will pop up and you can pause your video <clears throat> keep in mind that particular portion will also get recorded into your video of course for that we'll need to edit our video later on next option is minimized when recording starts so when you select this when you're recording the countdown uh, when it gets over this window will automatically minimize so you will have you don't have to worry about that starts minimize uh, don't select this because if you start this like this you will not see the window it will just uh, sit somewhere in your menu bar over here okay so we don't want that happening reset all settings in the next start uh, leave it as it is we don't want yes seconds to wait before recording so the actual recording will start after a few seconds so there was a countdown that is for you to get ready after the countdown it will take one second and the recording will start after that so this is the option okay, let's see what's the next option over here so this is a setting for how long and other things you want to set the timer and other things stop recording after so many hours so we'll just skip this for the timing okay so this is a information about the different uh, codecs and uh, other things that are available so in general a basic one will be available for you since we saw in the first one it is already there so let us just ignore this for the timing and finally this is the person who has created this help and other things are available for this particular one okay so these are the primary tabs that are there let's come to the next part this is your webcam okay so the webcam tab allows you to enable your web camera so just like what you're seeing right now you can see me being displayed over here in this corner so when you enable your webcam it will allow you to select one of the cameras now by default if you're doing it on your laptop there is just going to be one of the cameras if you have a external camera or something then it's a different thing but we are just talking about basics right now so here it will display you just the basic camera okay let me demonstrate it to you first of all i'll have to close this now i have disabled that camera from the previous recording and now you can see this is showing up so from here i'll not be shown any different options because this is just my laptop camera that is available so i'm going to select this camera and this thing pops up over here fine so you can have it full full screen like this fine or you can set it to one location somewhere you usually it will be recorded in a you will see a inverted motion over here so you can call it to like flip vertical or flip horizontal fine so in this case your face movement will be similar to how you are moving but you don't need this because the person who will be seeing you will be on the other side fine you can decide on the size of the camera which you want to give again this options will be dependent upon uh, based on your camera and how much resolution it can handle so it is going to show you that and also usually here you may not get a very high resolution for the recording purpose okay so i'm going to set it to small one another option here is remove the window frame so you just set your camera to one corner wherever you want it and then you can set it to remove the window frame and that is how it was getting recorded fine so even on right clicking you will get the same camera options while you are working you may want to change it to like switch to full screen here it is 
gone into the full screen mode and again I can say switch to window mode so it comes back to this so it has another options of gray black and white and what not so it's only black and white gray so grayscale recording so this is how you can get your camera to uh, so while recording let us say you don't want this camera anymore so you can go to say get the window frame and you can just temporarily put it down somewhere <coughs> so let me get my camera back where it went yeah so this is my camera over here and i'll remove the window decoration okay what else is there this is a player to see what you have uh, recorded and this is some information that is getting generated. So that is the simple mechanism of recording your content from this. So I'll pause this recording here and we'll just do a small demo uh, recording from this now. Okay, so I have started recording. You can see the start with this particular unit. I've started recording. Now, let me get my camera over here. So, there is a shortcut for the camera. Shift, Control, Shift, F8. Let us see if it works. Yes, so it enables the camera. So, probably while recording, if you don't want the camera in between, you can toggle it with this. That's good enough. Okay, so the recording has started. And I will minimize this for the time being or let us say I want to open something so I can pause it in between. So I will pause it and in the next screen you will see some presentation or something open which I want to say demonstrate. So I am going to pause it right now. Okay, so I have started it again. I will have to put it down over here. Okay, so this is my presentation and you can simply run your presentation the way you want to do it. The only issue is right now, if you start the slideshow, your camera, this one will not be visible. So if you don't want it, uh, you can just run the slideshow. And uh, otherwise, my preference is I just display it over here directly like this, because many of the times I have to display other applications also. So I leave it like this in one corner and since uh, people will be watching this on a laptop screen or something like that so this much is good enough for the visibility purpose. It's up to you how you do it and you can do your presentation in it. anything else that you want to demonstrate like if, if I want to run another application from here I'll be able to run some other application for demonstration purpose, how to do something and other things. So, so here I can just uh, continue with my presentation and explanation, whatever is there, right? So this is how you can uh, use Voco screen for creating a screencast easily. Now once your work is done, go back to this and simply say stop this particular record. So I have stopped this recording over here. Okay, so now let us see whatever we had done is actually recorded or not somewhere. So in my case, the recording went to videos and here this is this one which you can see this is the current recording that is going on you can see it is incrementing and uh, this is the previous one and uh, this is the earlier one which I had started with so this recording is somewhere in between and this is the starting one so I'll just try running this and you can see so you can see how my recording was done. Two of me over there, very interesting. Now in the current situation, many of us were recording the video and we need to prepare our lectures in a recorded mode. So there are different 
different options that you can use. But after using it for some time, I have found that this particular tool is quite simple to use. And I hope... Uh, so, you saw that recording. Of course, um, now I'll be editing that recording and then you'll be able to uh, actually upload it because there there are some cuts, sounds and other things in between. So the whole thing which you are seeing right now is completely edited. And how I edited it, I am going to put up another video. The link will be provided uh, in my description soon. So thanks for watching the video. Do subscribe to my channel for further updates and other things that you might be interested in. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video will be helpful to tutors and trainers out there who are looking for a simple way to make their presentations and other things for video demonstration purposes. Thank you.